Matthew Holt here with a quick THCB spotlight. Um, I'm talking with Ofa Lena. Ofa is the president of Happify Health, which has been uh, quietly making a little move in the uh, mental health and digital therapeutic area. And we'll discuss what that means in a minute. And today is announcing a big move, which they raised $73 million, which is a decent chunk of change. Uh, another of those very large funding rounds coming up in the mental health space. Ofa, good morning and congratulations on the money. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Excellent. Well, so let's uh, let's dive in. Um, Habify is a company that's in that um, serv servicing up solutions for mental health, which you know, has got a lot of news and a lot of money in the recent months, especially in, under under recent years now. Um, but uh, you guys do it in a particular, particular way. You're very focused on delivering applications and uh, uh, self service help. Can you explain a little bit about what your panoply of products does? Yeah, sure. So first of all, uh, we are a global healthcare platform that uh, combines both digital therapeutics and care delivery solution on a single platform with a goal to improve mental and physical health. And I think that one of the unique approaches that we've taken is looking at mental health uh, as a sub, uh, uh, as a meta condition that's essentially present in most conditions, whether it's a direct indication of mental health, stress, anxiety, or almost in any disease, uh, there are always gonna be some mental health component and using uh, our platform, which delivers uh, self-care solutions across the patient journey, we are addressing both mental health indications directly as well as addressing other disease areas uh, in which the mental health is present. Um, I, I would say that uh, one, one of the core components of our approach is, is, is religiously focused on patient journey and patient experience. Our background is coming from that engagement world. Uh, and the key theme for what we, we have been doing is really kind of starting to think about healthcare journey, healthcare experience uh, uh, as experiences that should not be subpar to what people are experiencing outside of the healthcare industry. So with that in mind, we've designed a set of applications that are delivering ev evidence-based interventions uh, and intelligently guide the uh, patient through therapeutic uh, solutions to ultimately drive clinical outcomes. So what are the, um, tell me a bit about the actual products or, or, or games or services, you know, the tools that you deliver. Um, a lot of them are focused around resilience, mindfulness, uh, relationships, other, other types of things. Give me a sense, you know, that, that's kind of like for the if you want the happy end of the crowd already. Um, obviously, there's been a big uptick, uptick in recent months, uh, well, we, now the last year or so, with uh, people with, you know, the sort of more standard depression, um, anxiety. What, what do you do? What do you, how do you triage people and what do you do for them? Yeah, sure. So we have uh, today essentially three solutions on our platform. The first solution is called Connect. That's essentially allow us to triage people and solve for uh, many of the challenges in the healthcare ecosystem whereby too many siloed solutions that don't uh, work and uh, drive the patient forward together. And that's one solution that we've been very uh, focused on uh, approaching. This is essentially a product that allows us to triage um, uh, users uh, that can uh, determine very quickly what is the best uh, care modality that that individual might need uh, what is the most likely care modality that that individual might uh, engage with and adhere with? You know, there, there's fantastic uh, solutions that try to put uh, uh, patients in front of something that they're not ready. So we kind of lost and lost that user. We're trying to really match between uh, uh, clinical needs, uh, care modality that are available and that particular um, ecosystem that we're working with. So that's Connect. We then have uh, the digital therapeutics platform that essentially takes eight different uh, evidence-based modalities around behavioral interventions, anyway from CBT, mindfulness, uh, reframing uh, therapy, uh, uh, activation-based therapy, all of those kind of uh, evidence-based intervention that had, be, had been used heavily in the field, validated, meta-analyzed, clinically showing results. And we automated them to drive a sequence of interventions that uh, ultimately are guided by an AI coach called Anna. So we are very bullish on the idea that uh, uh, the industry over time will, will, will mostly converge around automated solutions. Uh, 
intelligent AI that can guide uh, patients across their needs. And on the other end, you're going to be and uh, still continue to see therapies. Anything in between over time, we think the gap will be closed by uh, more intelligent software. So that's what uh, our therapeutic solutions are doing. Uh, we have over eight different uh, uh, therapeutic areas that we focus in. Obviously, depression, anxiety is the underlying indication, but we've announced solutions uh, around MS, around uh, psoriasis, and many other chronic conditions that have high comorbidity with mental health. The third solution that we have on the platform is COPA, which is essentially a care delivery platform. Think about it as an intelligent way to help patients navigate through different services uh, that are ultimately helping patients drive their disease journey forward. Uh, one of the core themes around COPA is the idea that in, in, in many of the meaningful, costly solutions out there, uh, uh, diseases out there, uh, patients simply get today a subpar uh, care journey experience that is siloed, that is broken. And on COPA, we try to bring all of the services in one place and essentially navigate intelligently uh, the patient through their kind of uh, journey. So those are the three solutions that we have today. Well, that's, that's pretty interesting. So if you're focused on a combination of, of you know, digital self-service tools, plus, you know, including the triage, plus the, uh, the navigation part. Um, there's some controversy, obviously, now, and I was just on Twitter yesterday, back and forth with uh, Russ Glass from, from, uh, from Ginger about, you know, how much should something be automated, because obviously you can scale that, versus how much, you know, you need to bring in humans, especially in the mental health side whether it be counselors, psychiatrists, whatever, because they're in very limited supply, right? Um, what's your sense about how much of these, sort of the big two, if you like, depression and anxiety, which you know occupy a lot of the mental health frame, how much of that can be done without actually touching a, a human, an expensive human, and therefore, you know, how close could something like have if I get to scale to the millions of people who haven't, you know, who've got these issues, but aren't receiving treatment? So we have uh, done a lot of work in researching this. And then obviously over the years, we've, we've kind of had uh, uh, significant real world evidence. Our point of view is that 80% of the behavioral health issues are episodic by nature and not chronic. And as such can be treated by software, mild, moderated, even severe level of uh, depressive symptoms. As you build those software to scale and essentially treat uh, and address those, you need to be able to uh, identify where you have deviation from that protocol. So if somebody needs a care modality that of a higher touch, you obviously need to provide it. But our point of view is digital first, scale first, and then funnel people into care modalities that uh, um, require higher, uh, higher touch, uh, more expensive, obviously have more scarce resources. Uh, in our mind, this is a way to make sure that the available high touch resources are really kind of utilized in the cases that the best uh, uh, can help uh, too. I don't see therapy psychiatrists obviously uh, going away. The, the demand is out there, but it takes 10 years to, uh, to train uh, a therapy psychiatrist. Uh, the magnitude of the challenge that we're dealing right now calls for software automated solutions. And we think that intelligent AI that carefully, responsibly uh, uh, navigate patient through their journey can identify when the patient needs something else and then refer to higher touch modalities the way to go. And then with your uh, tool that, uh, that I'm already called the name of, um, which, which connects with the, with the outside world and guides people for their journey, how much of that is guiding them to what type of services and what kind, if you're not providing the, uh, the, the, the human beings, how does that work in a practical way? Is that, is that what you're working with, with the employer's health plan or EAP to get into the people they've already got? Do you have a dedicated network? How, how do you think about you know, adding that last mile for the 20%? Yeah, so, so, so our approach, and again, we are working with large health plan. We work with four out of the five national health plan at scale. We are working with large employers. We're working with pharmaceutical companies. Our approach is essentially an open configurable uh, approach. So as we solve solutions for our clients, we want to make sure that uh, if they have network that they're happy with, great, let's kind of start uh, uh, connecting that ecosystem. We have partnerships that we've announced in the marketplace with certain types of network. We want to focus on the intelligent software component of this journey. 
uh, and, and let the uh, expert that specializes in network uh, build up accreditation, uh, utilization, that's a different problem. We, we, we definitely saw through the whole year of COVID uh, a significant improvement in market adoption where people basically said, we can go see the therapist, let's provide connected access. But that hasn't solved for the challenges around uh, supply and demand, around availability, around uh, uh, the, the, the fairly random matching algorithm that exists between uh, a therapist and the patient. We think that software can do it in a much better way. And our approach is we are uh, taking uh, the digital component and we are going to uh, connect uh, networks that we work with. Again, we have announced partnership with Talkspace a few, uh, few months ago. Uh, there are others that are connected on our platform. We can configure that on this framework to be an open configurable network that address our client needs. Now, I like it, it's sticking to your guns, not trying to do everything for everybody, but also um, you know, uh, going to where you think the majority of the problem is, which uh, I think is very interesting. And, and I'm with you. I think that the, you know, the, the, the scale of using digital technologies is, is the only way that we're going to make this you know, uh, extendable and hopefully cheaper than what's, what's currently out there. So, so you mentioned a little bit, you, 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 went away, you answered my next question without, without even asking you, which is pretty good, um, which is, you know, where are you in terms of the rollout? You mentioned the health plans you're working with the enterprises. Of the balance of where you mentioned oh, offline, you're about uh, cut 20 million covered lives and, and, and I think it was around 5 million have been active on the system. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. But uh, where's the balance of that activity? Is that on balance by the health plans, on balance by the employers? Give me a sense of where the main area is and give the main sense of where you can use that money to grow. Yeah, so, so um, you know, we, we kind of uh, try to look at our platform and our ability to work in a multi-channel approach and really kind of uh, advance the, the, the solutions across those channels. With the employers, we typically tend to focus on, uh, on, on large global accounts that have hundreds of thousands of employees and really can advance healthcare because uh, payers tend to listen to those large accounts, right? So we work with uh, three out of the five big tech companies, our clients on a global basis. That, that's kind of what we do there. Uh, with health plans, it's about lend and expand, right? It takes 30 months to get a, from first conversation until you get to a scale decision no shortcuts, you have to provide, you know, um, evidence that your platform works, that you have the clinical outcomes, that you have the quality and the health economics outcome. We have been on that journey and seeing tremendous growth in that category in the last uh, a year and a half. We've reached uh, scale with, with several of our partners. And then on the pharma side, there's a lot going on there, um, you know, in terms of uh, digital transformation for pharma. We think that, you know, fast forward five years ago, I think five or maybe more, but, but every, uh, every drug would have not only supporting digital uh, solutions uh, to enhance the unmet needs, but really kind of uh, uh, pharma isn't staying behind in terms of creating an ecosystem of support that is enhanced by digital capabilities, driving data, driving uh, intelligent navigation, helping patients improve uh, their outcomes. So we, we actually, uh, I would say payers and pharma is where we see a lot of uh, our growth coming from. Those are scalable solutions, uh, uh, both in terms of the monetary and also access to patients. Interesting. Well, I mean, if you were to push it out forwards on the, you know, wrapping the digital therapeutic around an actual pill, which, you know, pharma has gone back and forth about what it wants to do there. Um, is your, what's your sense that what a share of your business going out of you is might look like? I think that we'll see 50% of our business coming from uh, digital therapeutics, which are products that are coming at a uh, higher uh, treatment claims. Uh, not all of them would have to go through the whole journey of, uh, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, yeah, yeah, reimbursement and yeah. physician adoptions. There are shorter ways to get to that. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about pharmaceutical companies and their value prop in terms of uh, enhancing outcomes for therapies that have invested 10 years in development and are in the market selling for whatever it, they're selling, uh, the ability to combine digital uh, uh, compound onto those is where I think uh, ultimately this market will find itself uh, uh, converging to. There will be a lot of solution that will go through the 
um, you know, reimbursement route, physician adoption, and a lot of good companies that are doing important work, but that would take time. We, we think that there are ways to get products in the hands of people today, and then move into those combination uh, solutions uh, down the road. Yeah, I think mean, it's, it's wise to be playing both sides of the street there, because you're, otherwise you're sort of at the vulnerability of something goes wrong with the FDA or, or something else. But that's that's an interesting play. And I think, you know, that's 50% of your uh, revenue coming from there at some point in the future is, is it's a, that's a big number. So interesting, interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, All right, and, um, and maybe one last comment on that. I think that our approach has always been real world evidence uh, win. Uh, the FDA clearance is a process that you need to get you need to do the pivotal trial we have six randomized controlled trials but once you have millions of people using your software in the real world it's much easier to step up than starting from clearance and then kind of uh, convince uh, users payers physicians that your software works so so that's kind of a different direction yeah. that we're going to this market from interesting approach and real, real quick um just give me a quick update on the stats of the company you guys started in 2012 you said you retooled in in 2017 to to, to, to really come off the market in, in the way you've been doing uh you'd raised about 40 odd million before today so this puts you over 100 i think i'm right in saying now with the, the we raised uh so started at 2012 in 2017 uh, uh decided that we're going to scale the business once we had the software and unit economics and engagement all nailed we decided that we're going to scale through the enterprise markets uh so we've been selling since 2017 through the enterprise market we raised 50 prior to this uh uh, uh, round and now with 73, uh, that brings our total raise to about 120 and, and, and right, 120 and change. But who's counting these days? <laughs> and then, uh, um, and, and then give me a sense of uh, number of people where they are, just give me a sense of the sort of scope of the company at the moment, and how much you've been growing the last uh, year or so. Yeah, so we have uh, so we headquartered in New York, uh, at least hope to be back in uh, in in headquarter in New York. We have an office in Boston that focuses on the therapeutic side of our house. Uh, we've doubled the uh, headcounts uh, last year. We now have 130 people on board, and we're looking to double the company yet again this coming year. So, uh, if if anyone is interesting, we're hiring. There's a lot of opening <laughs> positions. All right, and then last qu last last question for you: This market essentially digital mental health across the waters has gone pretty much nuts in the last year in terms of the funding. There are so many companies now which have raised, you know, like you, serious amounts of money. So obviously, you know, going to be around, not, not worrying about making payroll for the next, next couple of quarters. But at some point, you know, obviously it's unlikely there are going to be 10 or 12 or how many there are major um, mental health companies out there. If you look down at telehealth, it kind of narrowed down the four that was emerging yesterday of, of one of the, one of the bigger ones. Where do you where do you think this shakes out? You know, do you think this ends up being separate, or do you think that some of the, the non mental health companies like the Telemox who've got mental health services get more into this business? Or how, how do you do you think it stays separate? Do it comes together? How many companies in there? I'm just give me a sense of where you think the future of the market will be a few years out. So, so you know, I don't have the crystal ball, but I'll try to give you my. Well, I didn't uh, ask you where the where Happify will end up in that. I just asked you where the market. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so my view is that in the, you know we we're at the tip of uh, uh, the most interesting era in digital health, right? And then you know from from kind of something that was uh, uh, on the fringe, esoteric, we're moving into kind of uh, full implementation of of those use cases with realization that you know, mobile first is a way to re redesign healthcare. I think that fast forward five, maybe seven years uh, from now, you're gonna see five to 10 major healthcare platforms out there that will connect um, uh, on a single framework, uh, telemedicine, therapeutics, uh, care journeys, uh, and those are gonna be focusing around different therapeutic areas. Um, we think that building the way we built our platform ground up to, to sustain those and essentially uh, uh, banking on a platform could make us uh, a candidate. We have a lot to execute, a lot to do, but that's where I think the market is heading. And along that journey, there'll be a lot of feminine activity, mergers, acquisitions. Uh, but, but ultimately, uh, you know, there's certain components that are harder than others to create and kind of... Uh, and build value around, uh, you know, layer one is the pipes, layer two is the actual therapeutics and, and, and care journey and algorithms and AI. Those are more complicated things to create. So, you know, I think players in that category will, 
uh, we'll have better chance. But you know, we're all kind of trying to improve healthcare. So you know, th th there's going to be a few years of uh, all out. Everybody is trying different things, um, but we think we're well positioned in in the area that we're focusing on. Fantastic. No, I think uh, I, th I think well, it's very interesting to see whether that will spread out. Whether we'll get more of a grouping together, everything under one umbrella, or people will go mental health here, you know, diabetes there, asthma. It's all. You know, as you said, going to work out, work it out, and, and as you said, no one, no one yet knows the answer. But suddenly, uh, you know, the battle is about to commence. Fantastic. Well, I've been speaking with Ofer Leitner. He is the uh, president of Happify Health. They raised uh, seventy-three million dollars to date. They're funding over one hundred and twenty million, and uh, are now certainly part of the part part of the big the big game. Suddenly, mental health. So, Ofer, thanks for your time. Congrats on the raise, and look forward to seeing how it works out.